Diplomacy, Mr. Jean-François Bureau. <coughs> Mr. Ambassador, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's a great privilege to be with you today, and I would like to thank very much the uh, University of Warsaw and all the uh, entities who took part in the organization of this very important um, seminar. Um, it's a great honor for me to have the opportunity to talk with you. And, uh, you know, I, I would like to tell you that being here today in Warsaw, of course, uh, is not only a way to commemorate the 10 years of Poland accession to NATO, it's also the opportunity to uh, understand why, along the last years, so many European nations have considered that for the security of their citizens, for their interest, for their place in Europe, it would be good for them to become, to become NATO members. And as the Minister has said, I share the idea that at the same time, these nations, your nation, were thinking about being also members of the European Union. And we strongly believe that what has happened during the 10 last years, the accession of Poland to NATO, other European countries uh, becoming also NATO members, 10 more nations becoming members of NATO during that period of time. At the same time, most of them being also EU members, shows that not only history has begun to uh, find a new trend for the best at the end of the Cold War, but also in a very um, wise way, in a very forecasting way, your nation and these nations have decided to be very key players of peace and stability in Europe. And I would like to say that this is the meaning I have in mind uh, when we are addressing these 10 years of uh, this 10th anniversary of NATO accession. As you know, we shall have in uh, this year, at the same time, the 10th anniversary of your accession, the Czech and the Hungarian accessions also. Uh, we shall have the 20th anniversary of the end of the Cold War, and we have the 60th anniversary of NATO. All these things are strongly related. Um, these events show that not only very, very big and huge and significant changes have taken place in Europe, but it shows that when the people decide, history can be built along their views. And in this last period of time, we have seen democratic nations, freedom, Law of, uh, rule of law, human rights being considered as the key values to build peace in Europe. And this is exactly the heritage of the 60 years of NATO. The 60th uh, anniversary of NATO is, in my view, dealing with the proof that solidarity can sustain along the time that the common values of democracies are of much importance. And this strength <coughs> has been able to face many different challenges to security and defense. We are, of course, far now from the Cold War period of time, but it is also uh, important to have in mind how challenging was this period of time. It was not so evident to consider that <coughs> the strength of democracies, the strength of the transatlantic relationship, would be able to overcome the threat of the military aggression in Europe, of the renewal of the military use of force in Europe. It has been done. And we believe that the 60th anniversary will be as well an opportunity to show how the history is going on especially during the, two, the 20 last years, but also to think about what next, what is now coming. Um, the minister said yeah, uh, very, um, in, in a very good way, in my view, that 
we are facing a more and more complex situation regarding security and defense. We have the usual threats, if I can tell them like that. The threat of aggression, the threat of territorial occupation, and we say that and we know that it has not fully disappeared. Uh, and we have the new challenges. Yes, the question is how NATO can deal with cyber defense, cyber attacks? What is the role of NATO for energy security, for prevention of terrorism? Most of the mission in Afghanistan is, is in our view, dealing with the prevention of terrorism, with the weapons of mass destruction proliferation. All these kind of threats and challenges are not going to disappear. And we know that it will be the agenda of NATO for the next period of time. I've been very pleased to see our friends uh, of the, all the NATO nations in the NATO village uh, around this uh, university uh, because the summit in Strasbourg uh, will be a NATO family summit. The NATO village is, in my view, exactly the NATO family itself. So uh, thanks very much for this symbol. I think it's very, very strong. And um, as you know, just a few words about the agenda of the Strasbourg summit. The head of states and chiefs of government will have um, to take one decision, mainly, um, which is to decide whether, and the minister uh, alluded uh, to it, whether NATO should again, as it did it in 1999, decide that the new situation means and requests an update, a new, a revised, I don't know which will be the end name, which will be used, but something which has to deal with the new strategy concept, I mean a new strategy concept. So, this will be the tasking the head of states will give to, the, uh, to our people. We shall have to work on it, and as the minister said, we shall have some key questions, not so easy to answer. First of all, Yes, Article 5 is the core of the treaty, is the core of the mission um, of NATO. How can the Article 5 be combined with the new context of security, which is the relationship between cyber attacks and Article 5, which is the relationship between terrorism and Article 5? These questions are a huge one, and these one are the, will be addressed in this period of time. Secondly, it's clear that NATO, if it wants to be efficient, if it wants to provide security and defense as it is its mission, can't do everything. The, one of the big and lasting lessons we draw from uh, the Afghanistan is precisely that the military answer, the security answer is needed. There is no development without security, for sure. But development is not mainly the core business of NATO. We have to build with the United Nations. We have to build to work with uh, the World Bank. We have to work with the European Union in charge of the training of police. It means that NATO has to find its way in a comprehensive, in a global approach. And this way is not as still to be defined. It is still something new for all our organizations to find a way to work together. Thirdly, and among this organization, just a word about it, the European Union, of course. It's very impressive to, say, to see how the non-European Union members of NATO, I mean Canada, Norway, Turkey, uh, the United States and others, can be frustrated by the lack of efficiency of the relationship between EU and NATO. And we are now fi fi finding the same challenges. We are together in Kosovo, ULEX on one side, K4 on the other. We are together in Afghanistan to, the to train the police for the EU to provide stability with the ISAF for the NATO. These organizations have to work together and we must strengthen the relationship and the way we work together. Thirdly, um, the minister said, is it the business of NATO to deal with climate change? Is it the business of NATO to deal with energy security? In other words, which is our core business? Where is our added value? These are the key questions we must address for this next period of time. And uh, what it means? It means that the NATO you have today 
will not be the same in five years. I'm sure that NATO will transform itself again.